I hope somebody else finds that as funny as I do. It's like the beach. Look at all the sand. Are you ready for this? That's a, that's a deep question that I don't have the answer to, but I bet, I bet somebody watching has an answer. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Phoebe was actually waiting for me at the gate. He didn't talk to me, but he was waiting for me. So, you know, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> that looks like a terrible place to lay. To each their own. Hey girls, you ready for breakfast? I got you covered. Got it. Morning, Panda. Hey girl. That cut good. Yeah, always. Some of y'all have asked about the Suzuki. It's an old samurai. Suzuki samurai. We got steel of a deal. And it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> During mud season, anyway. This little booger will go anywhere. Go get your breakfast. Do you know what year this is? 89. 89. It's a Suzuki Samurai 1989 model. I say it's worth its weight in gold, isn't it, during mud season? Yeah. Yeah. One thing we got to go through. Look at that deep. Yeah. Does a great job. Some people have asked about the tires. Anything special? Just a 15 inch mud grip. A little nine mud grip. 15 inch narrow mud grip. All right. There you have it. Everybody needs one. Everybody. I got to be the eyes this morning. Make sure I leave enough to feed another group. Hey, girls. Happy day. Breakfast is served. Yeah. I know I've talked about this before, but in case you're new here, well, if you are, welcome. And um, so we're feeding this, we're feeding these instead of in the trough on the fence line because it's so muddy and we might get stuck. And we don't have a four wheel drive tractor. Yes, it would be nice, but we make do with what we have. Anyway, so we're feeding them along the fence line. Yes, this fence is hot. Yes, they know it's hot. And if they touch it, they will get shocked. But they keep their nose underneath it for the most part and we don't have any problems. So, it works. Um, another question, a lot of people have asked why don't you feed where it's green? Why do you keep feeding in the mud? Well, because if we fed where it's green, if we move the troughs in a couple of days, it would look just like where they are now. And we would ruin that much more ground so that's why we do that. The cows do not and have not had any hoof problems. They tend to do fine. They could, but luckily we, we don't see that. So I think that's several questions answered <laughs> that I get a lot here lately. Anyway, they're happy. Happy as cows on a fence line eating silage can be. Teamwork. Teamwork at its best. <laughs> All right. Woo. It's Sunday, which is Fun day. Fun day. Mineral day. All righty. And we've got some nice muddy dogs. No, get in the back. Get in the back. Get in the back. Get in the back. I didn't get in the puddle. Not right now.
<laughs> yeah. It'll break up. You think you can do it? Good job. Good limb, does it not? Hangs out. We're gonna put up a new feeder, a new mineral feeder that's not in seven feet of mud. <laughs> We're gonna do a temporary hang. Come back and hang it in another limb. Forgot the machete. You needed the machete, and the machete. What are you doing? You filming me? Filming you? Okay. The machete is in the Zuki. So, we're going to do this for now and he'll come back. We'll do that later. We believe in keeping our minerals very safe. So, we, we tie them up with <laughs> seat belt. <laughs> I hope somebody else finds that as funny as I do. Oh. This stuff is amazing though. It works great. I have no idea where it came from, but we seem to have gobs of it. Came from General Motors. Thank you, GM. <laughs> you didn't rob them, right? <laughs> uh, they admit to giving me this seatbelt a whole roll of it. Uncle went to General Motors here. There's something wrong with it that they couldn't use it. So. Oh, well, they might be defective for vehicles, but they work great on the farm. Thank you, Mr. Ed. My little, my little videographer in training. <laughs> Can you say anything? Yeah. <laughs> cat's got my tongue. Cat's got your tongue. There's a cat on your phone. All right, fill her up. All right, fill her up. All right. How many? needs a machete. Not Lawrence. So he's got a what, an old timer? No. I don't know. Case. Case. Excuse me. Case. Case is good. That compliments of case. Compl that was compliments of case a couple years ago. We do love our case now. What? Yes, Thank you, buddy. <laughs>
barley out here, but I'm just going to look at it. He was saying it looks like there's more sand out there now than there was when we had Hurricane Michael, which was which was bad. happens like overnight. Mahelabor. Spelled Helleborus. Pretty sure it's pronounced Hellebor. They bloom and they're my favorite. I used to have a whole bunch. Some died last year, but they're coming back good. These 
pretty. They kind of go down. Anyway, I love them. A winter flower that say spring is on the way. <laughs> Look at the mud. My iris are coming up. Oh, there's a large part of a tree. I did it. Can you get that? All right, I'll let you. Thanks. And just a little bit of weeds. 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 <sighs> hate weeds. Also, <laughs> while the dogs fight and play at my feet, <laughs> I wanted to tell y'all about these new bibs I got. They're Liberty bibs. Liberty overalls. You've heard of them. I'm sure you have. They've been around for a very long time. But these are not your granddad's liberties. These are a new line of women's unlined bibs. And they're amazing. I love them. They're super soft. They're comfy. They've got pockets. All the pockets. <laughs> and um, they come in this color and a pretty sage green and in denim. And I'm going to be rocking all of them because they rock. So, meet the new Liberty. Yeah. Liberty made. Check out the Liberty link in my description. And all you ladies and all you men, your wives that do any kind of outdoor work or indoor work, whatever. <laughs> These things are great. So, check them out. Well, it has been another busy day. Very busy. It started early for me. I got to do something very fun today. And I have got to give a shout out to the Trinity High School FFA and Ag classes in Randolph County, uh, Randleman, North Carolina in Randolph County. I went and spoke to their classes this morning and it was so much fun. Um, I think, I think they enjoyed it. Maybe, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the cool part was a lot of the students were, most of the students are not farm kids. They've not grown up on farms. They've not been on farms, but they're taking these ag classes. They're learning mechanics. They're learning welding. They're learning horticulture. Uh, they're learning Ag science. I think that was the name of one of the classes. And um, it was really fun. I got to talk about my story and social media and sharing the story of ag and how important that is and how important they are to that and hopefully encourage some of them to go into ag in some form or fashion in the future. So um, they gave me this awesome t-shirt. Hold on, I'll show you the back. Let's see if you can read it. The back is fun. Hold on. Of course, I'm not using my tripod. That would be too easy. Okay. You see that? Um, something about working. Let's see. To, to those who work in acres, not hours. We salute you. I think that's what it says. Isn't that cute? I love it. Thank you, guys. I didn't... Um, I didn't take any video there. I wasn't really sure how that might play out with so many students and permission and all that kind of stuff. I did take a picture. Maybe I'll put that here or here or somewhere, um, but that was great. So shout out to them, to all the amazing ag ed teachers out there in the world, working day in and day out to teach students about the goodness of agriculture and um, really instill that into these kids. It's a great job. They have, I, they have all my kudos and props for doing what they do on a daily basis. So if you're an ag teacher, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Mr. Fowler, for your support at Trinity High School. Um, he has been a really great support of my channel and I appreciate him. And I appreciate the invite and being able to go. So I got out of feeding duty this morning. My son helped and now um, I'm preparing to leave tomorrow. I'm heading to San Antonio, Texas. I don't know how they say it out there, but that's how I say it. And I'm gonna be at Commodity Classic, which is a big show, farm show, agriculture show. I've never been, 
so I really don't know what to expect, but I'm sure I'll be taking you along. <laughs> um, I've got some fun, fun things planned while I'm there, some fun uh, events to attend and be a part of, and I get to meet some great, some more great people, and hang out with some more YouTubers like I got to do back in Nebraska in December. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I might even go live while I'm there. I might, maybe. We'll see, no promises. Um, but right now I'm preparing supper. I've already been talking for three minutes and 45 seconds. If you're still listening and watching, you are the real deal. Thank you. Who is that? We have puppies everywhere. Um, tonight I'm making something that I love, my family loves, and I don't think I've done this on video yet. So I will be cooking cube steak, making chicken fried steak. That's what I call it. Um, I have a recipe that I sort of, kind of, sort of follow, or I used to, and now I just kind of do it, but I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to show you if I can find it. I hope I can. Anyway, that's what we're having. Chicken fried steak, gravy, mashed potatoes for the second time in three days. I really don't see anything wrong with that. And green beans. So, here we go. Oh, I also have to show you my friend Sandy. Sandy Brock. Sheepish, sheepishly me, which is so hard for me to show. Um, sent me the most amazing gift in the mail. Are you ready for this? Butter. Butter, 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 butter. Where is it? Where's the one I love? Where are you? Butter. Butter. Aren't these awesome? They're my favorite. I love them. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, I don't know why I want to do that. I just keep wanting to do that. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay. Okay, I'm trying this little tripod again. Uh, so we have our cube steak, a knife. Would be good. It doesn't matter if it's used or not because we're cutting up the meat bags. Meat bags. Yeah. That's what they are, meat bags. Okay. And I'm just going to, I think I'm going to cut these in half so they're not quite so big. It's always good to remove the paper because nobody wants to eat paper. Um... I think I've actually never done that. I don't think I've actually ever cooked the paper, which is kind of a miracle in itself. Anywho, and this one's not too big. I think I'm just gonna leave this one. Cut these. Okay, somebody got glasses today for the first time. Glass, a little glasses wearer. What you doing? I'm I want you to show everybody your glasses. Uh, yes. Okay, let's see them. They look so good on her. And she can see now, right? <gasps> look at that pretty girl. They look great. It's for distance, so now what? I can actually see. Now you can see. <laughs> and it's actually a little clearer. Um, Is it clearer looking at me? Yeah, a little bit. Good. It's for, it, since it's just for distance. For it's distance, still, right. But it's still a little clearer for you. Yeah. Good. But yeah. They look great. I'm glad you like them. <laughs> Don't do that. They might get stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. This is my <laughs> this is my recipe that I've used more than once. Can you tell? Can you tell? <laughs> it's stained. Okay, what's it from? It's from uh, all time favorite recipes. I think I picked it up at a grocery store one time. There's some really good recipes in there. Of course, there's something with the cast iron skillet, biscuits, barbecue rub. I've never done that, but whatever. I don't think I have. Maybe I did. Anyway, this is where we're at. Squirrel. Chase so many squirrels around here. So, here you go. You can, like, screenshot this or something if you want. Uh, you can't really read that part because it's missing. But anyway... <laughs> Use cube steak, salt, and basically then in a bag, I'm going to cut up, not cut up, I'm going to smash. We're going to smash up some yeah. crackers. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're going to smash some crackers, some saltines. That, I think, is the is the kicker, y'all. The saltines make this. 
they make this recipe. So you use a bunch of saltines crushed up in a Ziploc and salt, pepper, uh, flour. Yeah, um, maybe a little, uh, where is it? I thought it was in there, like hot pepper, ground red pepper. That's the word for it, ground red pepper. Um, baking powder, huh, I don't remember doing that. I'm pretty sure I don't do that. So we'll just leave that out. Um, and then it's like a double dip kind of thing. So you, um, I'll show you. I'll show you what I do. I'm gonna stop talking. For the purposes of this video and this recipe, I'm just gonna use a full sleeve. And do you see how fun that is? It's a stress relief, just like mashed and potatoes. Yeah, just squeeze it up in there. I do that first and then you don't, you don't make a mess. Don't make a mess. I'm sorry, it's so loud. And I'll put this in a Ziploc bag with the flour and the salt and the pepper and the cayenne pepper, red pepper, whatever you want to call it. I don't know all the all the words, and I don't know how to speak. Um, and sometimes, sometimes the bottom will bust when you do that. So be careful, or you'll have it all over the floor like me, like that. Yeah. So, be careful. The recipe calls for the crackers and one cup of flour. You can use one cup of flour. I'm actually gonna use house altry chicken breader. I'm not being paid for this, but I love this stuff and it's already got seasoning and flavor in it. And that's what I'm doing. I mean, it does say chicken and we are making chicken fried steak. See what I did there? Why do they call it chicken fried steak when it's not chicken? A, that's a deep question that I don't have the answer to, but I bet, I bet somebody watching has an answer. Go ahead, tell me. I want to know. I really do. Okay, and since I'm not, I'm not going to add a salt and pepper to that since it's already got seasoning, but you know what I am going to do? Wait for it. Yeah, I'm going to try this because I've been using this on everything and everything I've used it on and in and with, I love. So we're gonna go back with the gunpowder seasoning as Lawrence calls it, AKA musket powder, musketpowder.com. That's where you get it. Use code TFW and you get 10% off. You're welcome. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle this on the steaks and then I'm gonna dredge it and then I'm gonna cook it. And then I'm gonna make gravy and this is gonna be good. So they say to put a little bit and then put a little bit more. <laughs> but I, I don't think it can hurt. I really don't think it can hurt at all. So we're gonna flip. We're gonna sprinkle, flip, and then we're gonna sprinkle a little bit more. Okay, it's all good. Yep, just like that, perfect. Okay, the recipe says three quarter cup of milk, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for a whole cup because I'm living in the danger zone. Not danger, it's, this isn't dangerous. It's good, it's all good. I'm gonna crack two eggs in it. Two homegrown eggs from my friend Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. And I'm gonna whisk that little stuff up. Oh, my whisk is dirty. Okay, I'm gonna get another whisk. I'm gonna do that. Okay. And then we're going to dredge, dredge. This is, a, this is not a very flattering angle. Shadows, whatever. What we're gonna do. Okay, here's the dealio. What you do, it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's not hard, I'm gonna show you. You're gonna take the meat, you're gonna put it in the flour. You're gonna get it covered. You're gonna put it in the egg mixture. Then you're gonna put it back in the flour mixture and then it's gonna be ready to fry. Okay, hold on. It's about to get messy up in here, but that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna just do a couple at a time. I'll show you. Shake, shake, shake. It's like shake and bake. Kinda, sorta, not really. Actually, I don't know. I've never done shake and bake, but I've heard. I'm gonna put it back in there. This is what I'm doing. Everybody's gonna have a different way of doing this. 
but this is how I do it. You could put it on separate plates and like pat it down and do all that. Or you could be lazy like me and put it in a plastic bag and let the bag do all the work for you. And there you go. It's all battered and ready to fry. See what I'm saying? Easy peasy. All right, I'm gonna do the rest and then we're gonna fry. Okay, y'all, there's, there's all my steaks. Um, I cook twice as much as normal because I'm making extra for them to have another night while I'm gone. I had to end up adding more flour and more um, seasoning, more chicken breader, because I had too much for what the recipe called for. Um, I had too much steak because I used too much. But I'm trying to plan ahead. I'm going to be gone. Well, I'm really going to be gone a total of four nights. I come home on the fourth night. But last night, I made ahead a lasagna and sloppy joe mix. And now, they're going to have enough of this to eat one more night. So, three nights are covered. McDonald's will probably cover the fourth night. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get the grease going. Um, this is canola oil. The recipe calls for peanut oil. I know peanut oil is great, but it's more expensive. And I think canola does fine. So, guess what? That's what I use. Potatoes are about ready to mash. Turn them off. Green beans, they're done. They're just gonna hang out and wait. So when that gets hot, we're gonna fry it. I'm gonna turn the oven on to 200. And what I'll do is when these come out of the pan and they're hot, they will go on a tray and go in the oven at 200 to stay warm and crisp while I make gravy. Okay, first ones are in the pan getting their grease on, <laughs> literally. And this pan is lined with foil and I put this little tray on it so it can drip and that's what I'll put in the oven. See that red there? Time to flip. Oh yeah. We're cooking with grease now, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I need to do another shout out for my friend Steve Gordon. He has a website a cooking website with amazing recipes, tasteofsouthern.com. Check him out. He's another North Carolina, Carolinian, if I could say that. And he's the one that sent me my handy dandy little cooking tripod. And he has a recipe for mashed potatoes that uses mayonnaise, Duke's mayonnaise, because that's the only, that's the only mayonnaise down in the South anyway. Um, I'm not going to follow it to a T, Steve, because I've already poured out the juice. Whoops! I poured out my I poured out my potato liquor, if that's what you want to call it. It's probably not what you want to call it, but anyway, I forgot. So, but I am going to include some mayonnaise in this with some butter and some milk. He calls for evaporated milk. I don't have that. I'm probably going to use half and half again because I'm kind of stuck on that, but. Anyway, we're going to put mayonnaise in these and see how that goes. I'll let you know. They called for um, a quarter or a half a cup of mayonnaise. I can't even remember now. My memory. <laughs> My memory fails me, doesn't it? All the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I just I put some in there. And I put some half and half and I'm going to stir it up. And it's got salt in it. We're going to see what we do. What we got. What we get. Oh, wait, I should have got it with the other hand. <laughs> left-handed. And they're just left-handed. I can't do anything left-handed. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. Okay, I also decided to add a little bit of cream cheese. Because that, that was such a, <laughs> that was such a hit the other night. <laughs> Let's see what we got going on. Oh yeah, I need to heat them back up. Oh my goodness, y'all. I think we're gonna have a winner winner chicken fried mashed potato dinner. Ah! <laughs> also not being paid to endorse Dukes, but Dukes is the best. If you don't have this where you live, I'm sorry. You ain't living. I'm so sorry. You ain't living, Austin said. She's right.
Okay, I poured most of the grease out, but I left some and the drippings in there because that's what makes it good. And then we're gonna add milk and a little bit of flour and we're gonna have gravy. Stay tuned. Okay, the recipe calls for four cups of milk. Of course, I didn't measure it, but whatever. <laughs> and a quarter cup of flour and salt. Some salt. I love that with salt. Some pepper. Ah, maybe. I'm gonna use this pepper since I have it. And then we whisk that up and we add it to the dripping. Woo! And then we keep whisking. And, and we have gravy. Like my, oh, there it is. Yeah. My little whisk. I, I love this whisk. I call it a hot chocolate whisk. A hot chocolate whisk? Because yeah. you use it for hot chocolate? Yeah. And you just have to stir and keep stirring. Stir some more yeah. until it thickens up. It's starting to thicken up now. We're getting there. We're so close. And it's so smooth. See, that's the good thing about whisking it up ahead of time before you pour it in with the grease, it stays smooth. Yeah, S speaking to myself, because I don't usually do that, but. Where are y'all? I can't find you. Good, I it's a good idea. I'm gonna clean this table one day, but anyway, what do you think? You were my favorite fan. Was it good? Okay, good. I'm glad you cook a lot. You're glad I cook a lot? Me too. No, you and cooked you a go. lot of it. Oh, you're glad I cooked yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, I did. You got leftovers. And there you go. Bon appetit. Oh, that doesn't even sound right out of my mouth. Whatever. Good stuff. Y'all gotta try it. Let me know what you think. What do you think, Bonnie? You think you want some, don't you? <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> good night. Say good night. Goodbye. Mama, please rub my belly.